Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go! Bowling Green, Kentucky is the center of Corvette production and the home of the Western Kentucky University, and it's a thriving town. This is the downtown which was spared from the tornadoes in December, but they hit this area here on the bypass where the strong man is holding up the Renault. And a lot of the thrift stores are here. We heard some of them were affected. We want to see who's open now. All right, well, today's challenge is to try to find good things in thrift stores before I have my dental appointment. So I am in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and the first place I am is, surprise, Yes, I'm going to try a Goodwill. There's three in town. This one is the one of the three that usually is decent, so let's see what they've got. I'm looking for something life-changing right now. Let's see what they've got out here that may be collectible or vintage or has some profit potential in it. This is actually not as old as it looks. And, hmm. Well, okay, I like these trays. Let's see what this one is. It's Texas. And it's all about Texas. The Texas Ashtray, Border of Texas Unlimited. Well, yeah, sounds about right. $1.99, yeah, I'll take this. This is Who's Art. So see, we've got something right away. I didn't realize Texas was right next to Washington and Oregon. Looks like they're getting prints and things out, but I don't see anything old there either. So let's take a look over here. I found some pretty good dishware the last time I was here. Mr. Froggy is new, but he's cute. This is probably a good deal here. I'll bet this is Noritake. It's got that look with that modernist handle on it and the big wide ears. And yes, it is. It is the Laureate pattern. And it's not bad looking. For five bucks, I'm sure there's money in that, but I've got so much dishware right now. I think I need to sell what I have before I go buying that. Here's some metal candle holders that look like plastic. And then down here, here's some plastic candle holders that look like metal. Ah, the 70s, they love to fool us. Thanks to other YouTubers, yes, I am paying some attention to plushes now. Despicable me, it's a minion with his original tag. If you wanted coffee in the early 80s, here's your coffee house. It's got your mugs and your creamer and your sugar, but where's the coffee? So let's see, anything else that looks old? It sure doesn't look like it. I bet these golf balls might be something worth buying if you knew Dunlop because they're only $3 each. And then there's a whole bunch of practice balls here for $3. That's probably a good reseller buy right there. It's not something I really do, but somebody should. You know, it's possible to see things in thrift stores that you know are good and walk by them, even though you know you could make money because at some point you have to decide what kind of a reseller you are. And generally I want to do antiques and vintage. Doesn't mean that there isn't good money in lots of other stuff. Just means that you got to pick your niches at a certain point. Well, two different unusual things happened to me in a goodwill. A, I found something to buy and B, the people were really nice. So yay bowling for you. The Goodwills were spared, but this plaza that has two thrift stores was hit pretty badly and the end is still damaged. I'm not sure if they're open. We're going to look around the corner and see. I certainly hope they've been able to get back into business. All right, so they are open. They have a bunch of these old ox yokes here, painted red, and some old chairs. So this is auspicious. Look at this great shade. And then we have an old Jim Beans bottle, and that one is the bowling pin, and that one actually does sell. They want 15. This is Hull, out of the early 70s. And look, blue geese, keep telling everybody the blue geese, they're going to come back whether you like it or not. So you might as well like it. <laughs> 42.50 the false graph set there. Now this on the other hand might be a good price because it's $12.50 and the divided egg dish is a little harder piece to find so I'm tempted to get this. So this place has 20 vendors. They also are a consignment store and they buy out estates so it's going to be a combination of all sorts of things. 
We know someone who actually sold her stuff here. A little collection of old shoes here. Let's see if any of these are collector names. Little Dutch shoes gonna be from the 40s. This looks 50s or 60s. Oh, a little earlier, made in Japan, so that's gonna be late 30s. But I don't see any that I think are particularly collectible these days. Bunch of Kentucky Derby glasses, $4 each. And we have a, an old English wardrobe. No mirror and on the outside because it's on the inside. That one's definitely for clothes. Nice pearl on it. And then this is a French table with the parquetry. And these have ends that pull out. So kind of like an English pub table in that regard. You can make it larger with the self-storing leave. You can see the little stubs for those right there. This is priced at $3.75. I have seen them priced a lot higher than that in the past. Here is an 1870s or 80s dresser with the candle stands. This is something that would have been from the old days of Kentucky back when this was the center of the transportation industry because it was all about horses. Here's a 1910 or so vintage music stand and it's been stripped and then repainted. I see what they were trying to do with it. Frankly, I would take that paint off though and just have the natural finish. It's $78.50 and let's see, they always had these push buttons which sometimes are a little hard to get open with one hand. And it's because you have to have a hand for you to do it. Okay, here we have a product demonstration. Why, thank you. Thank you to our hand model. Yes, push and pull. There you go. And there's the inside. Ta-da, with all the shelves for all the sheet music. People like these because they're good for sorting paper in an office these days. So you do see them used in a modern way. And then they've got this old treadle sewing machine with a very heavy base. Old luggage. I like the carry light on the top. Nice and green. Now if you had a use for this, this is actually a steel at five dollars. It's very heavy old glaze, probably made in Zanesville, Ohio around 1890. It's similar to the glazes we see on some of the early McCoy pieces, especially the little jardiniers and planters and things. Very old piece at a very cheap price, but I don't know that I have a customer for it, regardless of the bargain that it is. Here's another row of old dressers. This is a wash stand, and that's why you've got this. They sort of look awkward until you put a towel on them because you've got the mirror up high and then this big empty space, but you can see that they've got the wash linens on there. And then next to it, something similar, also with a towel bar. And then this one is marked down to 225. Now this one for the price is really much nicer than the other ones that we've been seeing. It's got a lot more carving. The three-dimensional aspect of the frieze here is more interesting. It's got the spoon carving of American Eastlake and that interesting sort of a gear shape to it. And then it's got this reddish marble top here. That seems like a pretty good piece for two and a quarter. All right, well, a little rag picking here because I saw some stuff that looked like my dad's old suits, like that red thing there. But then we got to this one and it says Pendleton and it's a Pendleton coat. And Pendleton is a great name, especially out west where I'm from originally. A little bit of no staining, hole. no hole. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, that's just this sort of tweediness in the wool. It's got the belt on it. Well, here it is. Pretty sure this is a woman's after putting it on. I think it was meant to be long. But the fact that it fits me pretty well means that it would be a nice long coat for a woman. So let's see what the price is because Pendleton's good stuff and it could be good money. Well, that makes me want to look through a little bit more of this to see. This is something called Requirements. That's newer. Oh, see, this one has a pin on it. This is something you look for when you're in thrift stores or estate sales. Now, this pin isn't anything real exceptional, but I've seen people put gold pins on jackets that were worth 10 times what the jacket was worth and leave them there. And lo and behold, this is another Pendleton. So this person rather favored. This is guaranteed to be a classic made in USA. Well, we found two Pendletons in here, so now I'm gonna look at anything Tweedy really quickly just to see if there might be any more. Herman Geist. Okay, cool, so $8 on the little one and 15 on the long one. I think we're gonna give those a shot. I was in Vintage Modern St. Pete and they had one of these late 50s, early 60s pickled oak 
actually I think they call it fumigated oak where they basically take an oak dresser and then they do the finish in this sort of a green or a black. Wow, look at the mushrooms in that contact paper done about 1965, I would say. And it's even got a cool mirror. It's priced at 168. This is a style of furniture with this dark finish that has not been terribly popular until recently. And now that gray interiors are coming back, we're seeing interest in these. These always had a few too many designs. That's why the modernists didn't go for them at first. But now people are enjoying them. It's sort of that Hollywood Regency look with the gold tracery and the starburst. And then you have bows for the drawers. And then the mirror is kind of Art Deco looking. It's, it's a lot of different design, but that's what makes it fun. McCoy wishing well. This is one of the most common things they did. But I always like the little chain on the bucket. It's only $8. Oh, wishing well. Somebody bought this for $85, the old domed trunk with a new style of painting. Well, TV Guide hasn't looked like this for a long time, has it? This is a buttonholer. We have a Price's Right model here. It is by Greist and it's got all the little parts to it. And these sell for about $20 online. And it's priced at $5.95, so that's probably something to buy. This is a Scandria, old shag carpet from the late 70s, and it is made in Scotland, but we can't see the design. Is it a woodpecker? Hmm. Is that good? I want to think it's good. I like old shag carpets. It's a bagpiper. Oh, it's a bagpiper. Well, that makes sense since it's Scottish and all. <laughs> That's fun, actually. The bottom looks like a woodpecker. Yes, when it's upside down, it looks like a woodpecker. That's true. And there's the uh, tag on it. Scandria, 80% wool. John Lyle Carpets of Glasgow. <laughs> That's kind of fun. And I like that someone has camo tape on the back to hold it down. And so there's a little loom in here, mini loom, $50. And this has actually quite a bit of age. If you knew whether it had all the pieces to work, this would be a great deal. I've sold looms at estate sales for two and $300 at estate sale prices. The J.A. Cowdy Reed and Harness Manufacturing Company of Rhode Island. So incorporated 1900. So this is something that's going to date back to probably the 1930s looking at the color. Only $48.50 for this old mantle clock. It's a Session. Sessions has always been a less expensive brand, but they lasted a long time because of that. And this one has very neat looking Art Nouveau ladies flanking it. So this is going to date right around 1900. And we can drop the back and look at the movement. It does have its pendulum. It is possible that it's in working order, but it does not have a key to wind it to tell. Now I know the clock market is down, but because this has such a nice design in the front, I still think that that could be buyable if it works. So I might come back here with my clock key sometime and try it out. Neat old wall clock here. It's got the time and strike. It's a Junghan, so it's German, 89.50, date to about 1910. Again, even in today's market with clocks being down, I still think that might be a good price. This is no longer child approved. You'll never guess what's behind my back. Made you look, loser. Ha ha. Well, that's very cute. But what seems to be behind her back are her hands tied up like she's been arrested. Little Pete artist made. Oh, it's Little Pete by the artist Maggie Head Kane. $175. My goodness. I don't see any reason that would ever be $175. I see the Mickey Mouse record player more often from the early 60s. This one is Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Made by Porter Chemical Company of Hagerstown, Maryland. And it plays 45 cents, 78. And currently playing is the Fifth Dimension. The best thing on these old walkie-talkies is somebody stuck the Mustang the Big Daddy Roth style uh, sticker on there. Along with Dart Doings from the early 70s. All right, let's see what we've got back here, Grandma. It's your attic, and it looks like this was Grandpa's attic on this side. 
bunch of McCoy cookie jars. The basket with pears is cute. The barrel is a fairly common one. They did that because of the success of Treasure Crafts barrel line, along with the cookie churn. We've got a Royal Copley duck down here. It's got some of its original sticker left. It looks like it was in a very dusty place. $4.50, not a bad price. You could make money on that, but I don't feel like cleaning it. Oh, here we go. Now, for those of you who didn't get to see Jocelyn's video at Crazy Lamp Lady when she and I went shopping at Renegers, uh, you really should watch that video. It's a lot of fun and they bought really great stuff, but I bought something that looked a lot like this, except it was plain and nobody knew what it was but me, and I'll show you. It is not a vase. It is not a spittoon. It has a hole in the bottom because it's a hat. Isn't that cute? <laughs> All right, are these Hummels? That is Schmid. Schmid made music boxes that look like these, but this is their effort to make a Hummel-like statuette designed by Bertha Hummel. They had some sort of permission to make these as little ornaments. The little boy in the diaper looking around the thermometer is something that sells. It's Sirocco wood, but even though it's a cheap price, the thermometer is a little messed up, so I think I'm going to leave it. Okay, this dealer is a dealer, and they're having 25% off, so let's see what this two-tone is, because it looks like Cameo, but I think it's actually just a satinization to make it look like it's carved, so I'm going to leave that behind. Let's see if this guy is inexpensive. He's got the blue head on a white body. He's got a big old chip, unfortunately, because he's only $5. Otherwise, that would have been great. This looks like an older plate here. In fact, a group of older ones. These are French Limoges. Look like they're by the Field Company. $20 for the three. And then there's this. I believe that this is by Adams. I think this is Titian Ware. Let's take it out and see if we can see. English platter, $30. This is Portia, who is pleading with Shylock. So it's from Shakespeare, and it is Adams. Illustrations from Shakespeare. Merchant of Venice. That would have been done about 1930, and it's $30 minus 25%. Here's the secretary desk from about 1900 with the stipple carving in oak. Drop front over three drawers. And really, that's a pretty neat piece. I like the porthole mirror on the top. It's only $195, and then it's 25% off, so that makes it about $150. Ah, yes, and Jim Beam bottles. Lots of Jim Beam bottles. These are everywhere. Notice how you see the same ones over and over, too. That's why they're not worth a lot of money for the most part. Three-piece set is $60. I wish it was a little less. That's too close to retail for me, but these are neat with the paisley. As I say, every time I see a cute old shade, I really need to measure my bridge lamp and figure out what I need, because that's only $12.50, and that would be cute as could be on an old bridge lamp. The vase on the right is painted glass, sort of in a goofus style, but I think maybe a little later than that, because it's not as refined. And then this is hull pottery in the matte glaze that was made before 1950. $34.50. That seems about the right price nowadays. Those used to sell for double that, and I do believe that Hull in the pinks is going to make a comeback because those colors are starting to make a home comeback in home decorating. They even have a pretty old cameo on 14 karat gold next to a nice old jewelry casket with the roses there. Gemex Revelation 21 Jewel Swiss Movement and it says it has diamonds. $60 seems awfully cheap if that's the case. And then here's this little cute set with the cigarette lighter and the compact in Mother of Pearl. There's three pieces there, so I'm curious to see what the third piece is. Probably a little pocket mirror, I imagine. If you find lead soldiers and they say Britons on the bottom, that is a popular brand from England. And you see a whole bunch of them here, and you see prices. Uh, the lowest is $6.50, but most of them are in the $12.50 to $28 range. They've got some neat old fishing lure boxes, including Barracuda brand from St. Petersburg, Florida. You don't see that a lot. I'm curious to see the price on that. Well, when I showed them how the hat worked, they said, it's not for sale, but they'd already told me $2, so I bought it. So that was Grandma's Attic, and then down at the end, St. Teresa Donation Center, they lost a little bit of their facade, but that's it. Now, unlike 
the grandma's attic that we were just in. This place is a little more Spartan and kind of organized more like a Goodwill would be. So let's see what it looks like. Thanks to Justin at Bearded Thrift Machine, who co-hosts with Kat and the Flipper on her weekly show. I look at golf clubs more seriously now, but these are kind of in that era where they're too old to be good and too new to be really vintage. Let's see if they've got any old stuff here. Plastics, but not vintage Tupperware. Another false wrap plate. Those seem to be in a lot of places. Salem Etude. This is actually a cute Art Deco pattern with the 23 karat gold paint. Very Art Deco. Can't use it in a microwave or a dishwasher though. This is Harmony House. Now Harmony House was made for Sears, but if this looks a lot like Noritake and some of the other early post-war Japanese pieces, well that's because Sears had these porcelain lines made in Japan. Their earthenware lines were made by American companies. For as much as you see of this Libby Safe Edge, they called it Safe Edge because it rolls so that it couldn't chip, and that was smart of them. And it's got this silver relief, you see it in the gold as well, but this shape you don't see as often. This little bowl is Westmoreland great, but it's got the Charlton decoration, meaning the painting on here. It's kind of dirty, maybe they overlook this and it'll be cheap. And it is, it's only $2.99. And you know, for $2.99, I'll clean that thing. Oh, but I can't clean that chip away, darn. Gotta look over these intricate patterns because sometimes there's damage you don't see and this one also has a big chip on the finial, so at least now you folks know a couple of places you need to look. Can you spot the one old item on this shelf? I think I do, and I bet you might be surprised which one it is because it's this one. This chartreuse green is Franciscan ware. I recognize this shape, and there it is. Franciscan, made in California. You would have to use a lot of Mother's Mag wheel polish to get the marks out from all those years of scraping the bowl, but it's only 99 cents, so if you were willing to put the elbow grease into it, you probably have an eight or $10 piece there. Tacked leather has become popular again, and they actually like it when it's a little worn like this, so it's not too surprising to me that this sold, especially because it was only $69.99. And I guess the person who painted that music cabinet in the other store must have gotten their hands on this too, because it's got that similar sort of odd choice of a few stripes where we paint a different color. This is an old piece though, originally from about 1895, Empire Revival style. And you know, if you don't mind the paint or you want to redo it yourself, it is only $100 with the mirror behind. Okay, now we're in the red-orange tagged 50% off housewares. So Kentucky Derby glasses are going to be about two bucks. Even more false graph down on the bottom. These look like these are older with the roses. I bet these are German or Austrian, but I see a spider crack. And it is Silesia, which is, I believe now part of Poland, but was part of Germany at the time. This is cute with the florals painted. It's got a little vent hole so you could use this as a casserole dish, and somebody did. It's oven proof, but boy, that glaze gave way after a while, so those stains are never coming out. A bunch of unframed prints. Again, if you wanted to take the time, you could potentially find something good in here. You know, a lot of people buy original art and then never frame it. But these look sort of run-of-the-mill. And it looks like they have many of the same one. This looks like a very bad interpretation of Norman Rockwell here. Country store picking. Number blank of 1,000, yeah, whoever had this printed was not proud enough of it to actually give themselves attribution. Red and orange tagged artwork, 50% off. Blue Boy, that is just about the most common print from the mid-20th century. I hear people say, oh, glass is so complicated and you really have to know a lot about it and I don't know what I'm looking at, but one thing I want to show you about thrift stores. If you see one and you're not sure, look around and see if you see more than one. That's a pretty good indication they're pretty new. 
Well, St. Teresa's is actually the first place I've gotten skunked today, but we were close. If that, Westmoreland had been in better shape. So we're going to press on and see if there's any other thrift stores that we can hit while they're still open today. And as soon as my mouth feels a little bit less sore from my dental procedure, I'm going to stop and eat as well. Well, on the heels of the success at Goodwill, I decided the next stop is Consignment World because I like consignment stores. Now, sometimes consignments have a lot of things at retail and sometimes they have real bargains and sometimes they mark things down when they've sat for a while. So I haven't been to this one. We're going to see what it's like. And somebody's just made a purchase. So see, there's stuff in there. Let's go see what they've got. Okay, well this is a true consignment store and they have a lot of furniture and a very sleepy dog. Aw, oh, look at that guy. Cooper. Hello, Cooper. Aw, oh, yes. You're very busy sleeping, I know. But it also looks like they've got some old stuff and some cool stuff and that's what I'm looking for. So we're going to look around and have some fun. Let's see, these look like Tonala. And they are $2.50 each, but there is not a signature on them to be sure of that. And they could just be studio pottery. It's nice glaze, but without knowing for sure that it's Ken Edwards or somebody like that, I think I'll uh, keep on looking elsewhere. This is World's Fair. This is the Louisiana World's Expo in 1984. It was supposed to be open until November 11th. It went bankrupt and they closed early. It was not a successful event. The Knoxville Fair a couple years before actually did much better. Little shoes with the cats. They are not as well made as the Fenton, you'll notice. They are made in Taiwan. This is a nice big old piece and see $40. This is why consignment stores are worth going to. This would probably be an $85 or $100 piece in better shape. It's an old English Canton pattern. It does have one hairline crack and they set a chip on the rim. That's unfortunate, but that is a nice piece. So there is some stuff in here. Big old Tupperware ham keeper down here. You don't see this one so often. $11.99. This one looks wrong to me like a repop. Oh, and it sure is. This is a good thing for you folks to see. You can't see under the price tag, but it says Victoria Ironstone. And if it says Victoria Ironstone, it is a reproduction. This one, on the other hand, looks better quality. Look at the better way it's painted. This one is original and might even be 19th century. Very 70s here with the Harvest Gold. This looks like something by Burwood, I'm guessing, or one of the usual suspects. And this one says, made in USA Home Co. $9.99. Nice old blue mixing bowl, but it's got a crack there. And this is going to be Hager. You'll see this avocado glaze with the sort of gray shadowing in a lot of Hager pieces made around 1970. Has a little tiny chip on the beak, otherwise I'd be tempted. It is $17.99 though. Fun with the bird, and I like the raised enameling. And it is signed Mexico, but not one of our more illustrious makers. Still would probably be worth buying for $6.50. I bet it would sell for something more than that. This is for darning your large stockings. So it's a stocking form. Priced at $19. People like to hang those on the wall as decorations. Not very many people use them anymore, of course. Here's a neat old cast iron kettle. This is a big heavy one. This is the kind of thing that we see in Kentucky. And people here really do like cast iron. Let's see if it's got any maker name on it. With this swivel lid and this heftier sort of thick and heavy casting. This does look like something that would be from around 1900. I don't see a maker name, but I do see a big crack in the bottom. You do have to watch cast iron can crack, and if it does, well, then it's just something to look at and not something to use. So that's why $40 is too much for that piece now, but if it was in good shape, $40 would be a buy. This one's a number eight. The other one you notice was a number seven. That has to do with sizes. And the number eight also doesn't seem to have a maker mark on it. This thing is peculiar, with the face in the middle and a mermaid body. Mermaid, merman. Made by Hancock in 2000. I noticed that this 2000 era ceramic has this 
waffle pattern on the back. It almost looks like linen, the way that they finished the backs on some of these. These don't look exactly like Keen. It's another print maker called Lee who was doing stuff similar to the Keen Big Eyed Kids. Look how sad they look. Was everything just really depressing back then? And she has the same sort of sad, melancholy, blank stare as he's trying to kiss her. What does she want? He's trying to be sweet to her. Gee whiz. Motorcycle fund. These are very 70s flower power with the orange harvest gold and avocado colors. Everything you want. And they are made of metal. These are actually by Sexton. Sexton and Wilton made a lot of these. These are dated 1967. And they're priced $50 for the set. And yeah, to me that's kind of where I'd want to sell them. I always love the colors of this particular vase. Old Child's Dish with the Dutch motif that was very popular in the 20s and 30s. And this one has the ABCs on the outside and was made in Germany. Got an old wall pocket here. So there is stuff to buy here. $15.50. I haven't found anything that was quite what I wanted in my price range, but you know, I have a hunch there's going to be something here. This one, a little worn at the top, only $3.50 though. Japanese from the 30s. If I needed a hair dryer, <laughs> that's pretty cool looking. Again, out of the 70s, 140 bucks. Wow, this place has some back rooms. There is a lot of stuff in here, actually. Most of this looks like it's more contemporary and useful furniture, though. Big old 1890s bed with rails. They had 199 on it, now marked down to 129 So they do have dates on the tags, and it looks like prices do come down. Some old children's desks here, school desks. This one's 35 This one's a little older. And it's got some really great graffiti all over it. Naughty children. These are just really nicely done prints. The Tarantino, $7.50 a piece and very pretty. Okay, I really like the grand opening sign a lot. And it's big and it's just kind of neat looking. These letters, it makes me think something from the 60s. It's priced at $159. The brighter day glow colors in this tell me this is 1960s or 70s from Mexico, but it's soft. So it's a nice fabric. It's not synthetic. And it is 1850. This stuff looks really good with Indian baskets and things that I sell. When you have a lot of browns and neutral tones, it's nice to have something like this with it. I might get this. On the old Laffin show, they would make jokes about, you better put it in your Funkin' Wagnalls. And there is the Funkin' Wagnalls new encyclopedia. It's funny to see $90 on an encyclopedia set, but when they're nice looking like this, people are buying them and just using them to fill shelves as decoration now. So the prices have actually gone back up on encyclopedias. For a long time, you couldn't give them away, but if they're good looking, you know, now there's a market. Now this is a smart thing to do. If you've got an old sofa and you're not sure how to reupholster it and it's for resale, if you put muslin on it, and then it's a neutral color and people can envision it having anything they want on top of it and it's a good base to work with. So that's actually a good way to present a sofa if you're not sure. Now here's a Chinese piece of furniture. Is it old? Well, it's priced at $1,200, but my guess is that it might not be terribly old because look how thin the stamping is on this. It doesn't have any wear from having been used over the years. Where the paint is worn seems to be deliberately worn. And I say this because a lot of this was shipped in about 30 years ago and it was sold as antique in a lot of cases. There was a lot of misrepresentation and the American market was not as sophisticated about these things. So you really need to look closely if you're going to spend big money on a piece of furniture. Now $1,200 might be a perfectly fine price for it, even being more recent vintage but don't be fooled into thinking that it's really, really old. This, on the other hand, is really, really old, and it's really a neat design. I like these old hall trees with the big cutouts. They've got the big knobs so you could hang a big, heavy coat on them. This one looks like it's in pretty good shape. It has a little bit of a crack here just from aging, I think. It's uh, something that would have happened probably from change in temperature. It could be filled and patched. The rest of it's in good shape and it's $149.99. Those are the original drip catchers for where you put your umbrella. I think that's a neat looking piece and really it's a good price. I've sold this 
or something very similar to it for 300 and they've got the furniture they've got older furniture pieces mixed among the new little oak chest of drawers for 130 nice looking brass bed here i see a sold tag on that that's a neat design not the typical ones that are just the posts that we see more often well here's a big old pile of resin grapes let's see how much they want for those a later color of fiesta in the disc pitcher they are after 4250 for that and you know that's probably about retail because it's a big cluster and then they've got 3650 on the three mushroom pyrex bowls which is not a bad price either not something i can make money on but not terribly overpriced either this also says sold this is a nice corner cupboard from a local home i'm sure it was built in originally new you can see they used some pretty rough wood and just the utility opener that they made back then it's a nice primitive it was 279 originally and it sold at 199 so they do apparently mark prices down if something sits for a while that's good to know i'll have to come back here and check this place every so often a little hi-fi here seems to work still oh and it has eight track tape capability it's only 3850 a lot of old farm implements hanging here but these are priced more for decorating with farm junk you can get better deals on a lot of these if you go to the estate sales and find them out on the farm if you can where you are schwinn varsity bicycle this was a very common and well known and well regarded in its time bike and it's 8950 that's actually a pretty good price for restoration it seems like it's all there just needs some new tires and a a little bit of cleanup and it looks like it's a 10 speed early one seven bucks each for the king's crown drinking glasses that's actually a pretty good price the tumblers are harder to find you see a lot of the stems oh look at this old gas tank says whizzer that is cool and that is 124.50 because any old motorcycle gas tanks are big money now if they're in good shape and then one last place i want to check here i like these old oil cans especially when you've got companies that you don't see anymore or logos that have changed dx is not around anymore this is 1850 and you know where i sell i might get 40 dollars for that so that is a possibility too this print is mademoiselle dubois and it was done in around 1700 this is a print of it but it's got a nice old frame and it's priced about 90 dollars i don't think for the way that's presented that that's a bad price at all it's funny the way these are presented it looked like a lighthouse with fruit at the bottom but i realized they are two wall pockets made in japan in the 1930s one and two and they're priced at 850 which seems really inexpensive for the two of them i think they're cute and springy and festive I might just bite on those. So it may not have been the most amazing resale picking day, but I found some stuff. I was happy to find some things in thrift stores at thrift store prices. Life is good. So as the skies go dark, I am going to tell you really fast goodbye. Thank you for watching. Please do like and subscribe. Please tell your friends. Please check us out every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern for new videos. And we'll see you again soon from somewhere in the worlds of antique and vintage hunting. Bye for now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at the Antique Nomad. Bye for now.